Your true heart is to risk your life. Because death can come for us at any moment. I was just a mere infant when it showed. <laughs> um, you know, it's extremely important to point out that this is a new version, if you can call, even call it a version. It's, it's groundbreakingly stunning and very, very true to the book and very, very true to the, the layers and the complexity of the book, which I think we're able to do more in current day TV than perhaps we've ever been able to do in history. And FX was dedicated to making it as complex as the book was, which is no small feat. And everyone here paid homage and respected that and gave it its due. So we're terribly, terribly proud. For me, you know, that period is so familiar. I had grown up in Japan and acting for, from the kid. Mm -hmm. And um, so many uh, shogun or uh, samurai roles in that period, in including the model of Toranaga, uh, Ieyasu Tokugawa. I played that in Japan as well. So for me, it was familiar uh, period and characters. Mm -hmm. So you had a leg up. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was starting from reading the novel, be beautifully written and so detailed, but I knew that we were going to try to give it our own take. And so um, having conversations with Justin and Rachel, and especially Rachel because she had kind of carried Mariko for years before I even knew that I was going to um, take her on. So um, listening to her stories and receiving what she had and um, giving it my own um, take and researching a little bit on uh, Hosokawa Barasha-san and um, just living with her, I guess, living with her for 10 months. It, mm -hmm. it naturally <laughs> just <laughs> felt like she was a part of me and that was really heavy. But um, yeah, I think that, you know, it was already like a visceral feeling and towards the end. I didn't even have to think about it. It was just all in me, yeah. And Coswell? Blackthorn was in a pretty uh, convenient position of being able to learn as the script required him to learn. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what he did. And this is what you did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I would say, I mean, for starters, there's, and there's something that, uh, there's, there's a line in architecture, someone said they talk about buildings and, oh, a big scale building or a small scale building. And, and there was an architect who said, there's only one scale for a building, it's the human scale. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that w we approached it very much like that, is that you, you come into this story knowing what three characters you're telling this story about. It's a story of agency, it's a story of entrapment, it's a story of people trying to carve out some control over the path of their destiny. And uh, once we had really done that and decided on that, I think we could subordinate all the s stories to those confines and build the world out from that. Um, and so you keep it really simple and then it gets completely out of control uh, <laughs> in its scale and its, and its size and, and you know, you can, you can either panic and, and lean back or you can just kind of lean into it and let the wind pick you up. And you know, that was so much of, I think, the journey for this show, being a collaboration across cultures, was to you know, acknowledge how little you know um, mm -hmm. at the beginning and to be okay with that and to work with partners as generous as uh, Hiro-san and Eriko-san to, to you know, be, ha be, have as much grace as possible uh, when it comes to making mistakes and trying to get it right again and again and again. Subtitles for one. So many. And I love it. I love that we're not being like, yeah. Oh, we're not being shy about subtitles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> subtitling was very important from the very beginning mm -hmm. because this was 
a story that was being told uh, from uh, you know, a set of characters and a culture that was not our own. So it became of paramount importance to make sure that that the people with whom we trust uh, entrusted the story were able to do it within their own language, yeah, yeah. which makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. And it was an odyssey as mm -hmm. a as a group learning how to tell. Uh, the story through subtitling and there was there's a journey I don't know how deep we can go into the journey but there was a journey to learning how best to present subtitling because we wanted it to be unlike uh, previous ex experiences we wanted it to be new and and the approach to feel fresh Oh, we're the actors. No. <laughs> <laughs> for you guys, like to be able, like just put on your costume. Right. But like to be able to put on your costumes and your outfits and just be like, like in that world. First time wearing kimono. Oh yeah. Ah. All very helpful. They did a fantastic job. Yeah. Uh, manifesting the world and it was everywhere you looked. Some, some, a lot of the time it was, it was everywhere. So that was a new experience for me. Yeah, I think that wearing kimonos, it's so restricting. And so it changes the way that you walk, you sit, the way you stand up. It's so hard <laughs> to do that gracefully in a kimono, but you have to learn. And um, we had a lot of training prior to the shoot. And so um, by the time we were on set, I think it was, you know, it felt a little bit more like we had been doing that for a while. Right. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we tried to make authentic mm. as much as possible. We had a great Japanese crew and cast, and then mm. great, you know, Western crew, Japanese crew working together like a dream team we had. Mm. So this itself was the very first time, and then I was so happy. Mm.